Bless us, Lord, as we minister the word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody say, never, never. Alone. alone. These are the words that the Lord, upper room, whispered in my ear last Wednesday night while on vacation. My wife and I, I certainly enjoyed her. We took a few days to kind of rest and recharge our batteries. Got a little change in scenery, that's always good. And I'm always appreciative for time that the Lord gives me uh, to spend with her. Um, uh, it's a blessed time. But I'm never far away from preaching never far away from the word of the Lord. I'll be honest with you. I don't know how these preachers, things have changed now. There are preachers who take a month off. I wouldn't know how to take 30 days off from preaching. It would probably kill me. Around about that 14th day, I'd be grabbing the mailman. Uh... The, the FedEx guy, just somebody, I got to preach to somebody. <laughs> Praise the Lord. A friend of mine asked me the other day, and he asked me out of concern, he said, well, Pastor, uh, do you have to preach? And uh, we had talked about the services that have taken place, and he says, do you, well, you, do you have to preach that one? I said, well, um, I don't have to. God has given me capable help. We have powerful preachers here. But when it comes to what we do for the Lord, for me, it's not a have to. It's what I want to do. For as long as I can, I want to preach the word of the Lord. This is what we're called to do. And uh, is, isn't it amazing that athletes, entertainers, and people like that, people in the world are admired for their work ethic. And when it comes to the kingdom, they tell us, don't work too hard. Slow down. And I'll tell you something else. Uh, it is in our community. Many times what we constantly tell our young people and our sons and daughters is don't work so hard. But in other communities, their kids are raised being told work, work, work hard, work hard, do it. Make it happen. Nobody's going to give you anything. You got to get out there. You got to work. You got to work. They are, that's ingrained in them. And what's ingrained in many of us is don't work too hard now. Don't work yourself to death. You know, you got to take a break too. Some of, you are too, some of us are too young to be talking about a break. You just got started. And and, and, you, and especially when you're in that stage in life where you're in your prime working years. You don't spend your prime years home watching, eating bonbons, watching TV. No, th th this is the time when you can do it so you can set yourself up. So when the day comes, because if you live, the day will come when you can't. If you live long enough, you will outlive your ability to do. If I live long enough... I will outlive. These will wear out. So you put your time in. Praise the Lord. I ask the Lord, what do you want me to say to the people uh, Sunday? You know, I'm always happy when the Lord whispers something in my ear. Because it kind of lets me know I'm going to live. <laughs> you know, if you whisper, God, what you want me to preach Sunday? And, 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 uh, and there's nothing. I'm like, now, you know, what are you trying to say, Lord? Are you telling me I'm not going to be here? What's the deal? 
And if the Lord gives me a word, you know, God can't lie. If he gives you a word, he's going to let you preach it. He said, tell them never alone. Never alone. And he said, preach it from the text. Preach 2 Kings. Never alone. Contextually, the national scene in Israel had drastically changed from the stormy days of Elijah's bloody confrontations with King Ahab and Queen Jezebel. You know, Elijah, who was the Elisha's leader, his pastor, Elijah was a fugitive. He was the a dreadful antagonist to Ahab and Jezebel, they were wicked. And Ahab got in, uh, Je Elijah made life miserable for them. He was used of God. Elijah said, it ain't gonna rain no more until I say so. Praise the Lord. And then disappeared. When he went hiding, see, when, when a prophet hid, that was a sign. That, that gave the, the national uh, inference, uh, the opinion that there was no word from the Lord. So the man of God gave a word and then hid. Now there's no word from the Lord. Are you following me? And, uh, and you know the story of the, the battles that went on and how... Elijah defeated the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the grove and how he prayed for an abundant rain. How the Lord used him. Ahab, rain is over. Jezebel is dead. Ahab is gone by our text. And Elijah, by now, had been taken up in a chariot of fire. Glory to God. He's with the Lord. So Elijah was a fugitive, the antagonist of um, Ahab, while Elisha, on the other hand, was a welcome guest in the king's court. So it had changed. Both men were men of God. Both men used of God, but used in very different ways. That was a great contrast. King Jehoram Ahab's son was not a righteous man, but he was a more sensible king than his father and his mother, Queen Jezebel. If you look at 2 Kings chapter 3, verse 1 says, Now Jehoram, the son of Ahab, began to reign over Israel in Samaria. He began to reign over the, the northern kingdom in the capital of the northern kingdom, which was Samaria, the 18th year of Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, the southern kingdom, and reigned 12 years. And the headquarters of the southern kingdom was Jerusalem. Headquarters of the northern kingdom was Samaria. And look at this, speaking of Jehoram, and he wrought evil. In the sight of the Lord. Look at this. Verse 2 of 2 Kings chapter 3. He wrought evil in the sight of the Lord. But not like his father. And his mother. For he put away the image of Baal. That his father had made. Nevertheless. He cleaved unto the sins of Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, which made Israel to sin. He departed not therefrom. The sin that um, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, brought the northern kingdom into was the sin of idolatry. That is diversity. Multiple gods. Uh, their sin was that they came up with alternatives. 
They set up alternative worship days to rival the worship days that God established when the southern kingdom, when Israel was split. You know, Israel became one under David, remained one under Solomon, but it was under Rehoboam, Solomon's son, who would not listen, that the kingdom was split. Jeroboam split Israel into two kingdoms. It, it became the northern kingdom, which is Israel, and the southern kingdom, which is Judah. And when Jeroboam split the kingdom, in Dan and Beersheba, he set up false gods. And the Bible teaches that he hired the most lewd men and made them priests and made them prophets and developed a, an ulterior religion to rival Judaism. He was afraid that if the Jews went back down to Jerusalem to worship on their worship days in Jerusalem, that they wouldn't leave Jerusalem and go back to Samaria. Which, and he was probably right. So the devil, through him, offered the people an alternative. So from there on, you had the kings of Israel, the northern kingdom, and the kings of Judah, the southern kingdom. And it was that way until both kingdoms fell and, uh, uh, and were brought into bondage. The Assyrians took the, the southern kingdom into bondage and Nebuchadnezzar brought down the northern kingdom. So here we are, and um, this man, he wasn't as evil as his father and mother. Ahab was an evil king. And the problem with Ahab's leadership is that Jezebel was his king. I didn't say queen. She was his king. And she was a wicked woman. But she had him uh, under her control. And they brought in all kind of idolatry uh, and the, 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 the wicked sins of the Zidotians and all of that was brought into Israel. As a matter of fact, they brought in other gods and they set up, they erect uh, altars to other gods in the temple of the Lord. So when Jehoram if you're following me, became king. He wasn't the most godly of men, but he was not as bad as his mama and daddy were. Thank God for that. Now, for the thing that caused Elisha to have favor with Jehoram, chapter 3, verse 4 tells us, King Mesa. And Mesa, king of Moab, was a sheep master. That is, he was a sheep herder. And he rendered unto, look at this, the king of Israel, this is foreign policy now. The king of Moab rendered unto the king of Israel a hundred thousand lambs and a hundred thousand rams with the wool. All right? But it came to pass. When Ahab was dead, that the king of Moab rebelled against the king of Israel. So when Ahab died and his son Jehoram became king, then Mesa, king of Moab, decided we're not doing this anymore. And so he rebelled. He's testing the young king. And King Jehoram went out of Samaria uh, the same time and numbered all Israel, and he went and sent to, look at this, Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, saying, the king of Moab have rebelled against me. Will thou go with me against Moab to battle? We've got to form an alliance to do battle. And he said, I will go up. I am as thou Art, my people as thou people, and my horses shall be as thou horses. He says, I'm a, I'm a Hebrew like you are. My people are the same as your people, and, uh, and my horses are as your horses. And he said, which way shall we go up? And, uh, and he answered, the way 
through the wilderness of Edom. We're going to swing down south and we're going to uh, come up around them. And so the king of Israel went uh, and the king of Judah and the king of Edom. So they went down through Edom and got the king of Edom uh, to, to be a part of uh, the fight. And, and they fetched a compass, fetched a, a compass of seven days. Look at this. Seven days journey. And look at this. As they began to march to go the, to battle on a seven days journey, look at what happened. And there was no water for the host and for the cattle that followed them. And the king of Israel, Jehoram, look at what he said. Alas, now he wasn't a good man anyway. Look, notice, now he's got all of these gods. He points out one. The Lord have called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. He blames the Lord. He blames the Lord. Isn't it amazing how we blame, America today blame Christians. And Christianity, for all of the society's woes, you can't pay them to say anything against Muslims. Amen. You can't pay us to say anything against Buddhists or other religious organizations. But oh, it's open season now on Christians. This man blamed Yahweh. He blamed the Lord and said, God have delivered us. He, he, he put us out here on this journey to deliver us into the hands of Moab, but Jehoshaphat, bear with me now, as the Bible speaks for itself, but Jehoshaphat said, is there not a prophet of the Lord? Which is the question they should have asked before he, before he, he agreed to go out and fight. He says, is there not a prophet of the Lord? Saints, pray about things before you do them. Get godly counsel before you do them. So some of us go and do it and then want to have a meeting. <laughs> mm, you, you might want to get counsel before you. You might want to, you might want to look before you leave. So he says, uh, that, that prophet of the Lord that we may inquire of the Lord by him. And one of the king of Israel's servants answered and said, here is Elisha, the son of Saphat which have poured water on the hands of Elijah. This was a servant who had, he spoke up and he said that Elisha served Elijah. He got recommended because he was Elijah's servant. Are you with me? And Jehoshaphat said, the word of the Lord is with him. As sure as he served Elijah, the word of the Lord is with him. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat and the king of Edom went down to him. And notice this. And Elisha said to the king of Israel, Jehoram, Ahab's son, Jezebel's boy. He looked at him and said, what have I to do with thee? Look at this prophet speaking truth to power. What have I to do with thee? Get thee to the prophets of thy father. Go on. Why aren't you seeking the prophets of Baal? Why aren't you seeking your daddy's prophets? What? Are they all dead? See, you all, I thought you all loved Baal. I, th I, th I thought you guys were Baal worshipers. Why you come to me? Because I represent Yahweh. See, let me tell you something. When you stand for God, you will always have the last laugh. Sooner or later, they're going to come back. They, you're going to have to come back to the man of God. You can run, but you can't hide. You can leave the church. You can say bad things about us. You can do whatever you want to do. But life has a way of bringing you right back to the man of God. Hallelujah. So he says, why, why, do, why aren't you talking to the prophets uh, uh, of your, your father and to the prophets of your mama. <laughs> now you know what he said. You know he said mammy, right? That, that's what he said. And, uh, and the king of Israel said unto him, Nay, 
For the Lord have called these three kings together to deliver them into the hand of Moab. He said, no, the Lord did it. So we, since you represent the Lord, we thought we would come to see you. And Elisha said, look at this. As the Lord of hosts liveth, before whom I stand, surely where it not, were it not that I regard the presence of Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, I would not look toward thee, nor see thee. He said to him, I want you to know, if Jehoshaphat wasn't with you, I wouldn't even enter into this. I wouldn't look your way. Because you, 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 your daddy was wicked, your mama was wicked, and you're just like her. The Bible is something, isn't it? It said, were it not for Jehoshaphat, King of Judah. God says, I wouldn't even bother with it. The prophet says, I wouldn't even bother with it. And then, uh, it's amazing when I was studying this, Sister Rayford, your husband called me at the very time I was reading verse 15. Because the Bible says in uh, chapter 3, verse 15, uh, after Elisha says this, he says, but now bring me a musician. And it, and it came to pass when the minstrel played that the hand of the Lord came upon him. Go get me a musician. Go, uh, Elisha said, go get Rocky. <laughs> get the church house band and let them play. Isn't that something? And as the musicians, this is why the musicians got to be good and saved. I hope y'all can hear me. Good and sanctified. It says, get the musicians and they, they step out and get water to refresh themselves. And let them play. And, uh, and, and when the minstrel played, that the hand of the Lord came upon him. And he said, thus saith the Lord, make the valley full of ditches. For thus saith the Lord, you shall not see wind, neither shall you see rain, yet that valley shall be filled with water that you may drink, both you and your cattle and your beasts. What a mighty God. God said, dig ditches. And I'm going to fill them up. But I'm going to do it miraculously. For there will be no wind. There will be no rain. Y'all stop telling God how to deliver you. How about leaving how to do it up to him? You can ask him to do it, but don't try to tell him how to do it. Now, Lord, what I need you to do is send a check in the middle. No, no, no. You need the Lord to bless you. You don't need to tell him how to bless you. Let him bless you the way he wants to bless you. Sometimes God uses conventional methods, and sometimes he doesn't. Just to show us that he is the Lord. And, and he keeps us. You know what God does? And this is something you're going to have to learn. God keeps all of his servants honest. You'll never figure how, out how the Lord's going to do it every time. And if you think that God's going to show you that you, you got another thought coming. He's God. We're not. He'll show you what he wants you to see, but he's not going to show any of us everything. Oh, there have been so many deliverances and so many things that the Lord have done in my life. You know, Sister Janice, he opened doors that I could not see. He made ways that I didn't think were possible. Praise the Lord. God knows how. In God, doors are everywhere, even though we may not see the door. And where there are no doors, he will make one. He says, I am going to fill up the ditches. But I'll tell you what, don't wait for rain. Why did he tell him that? Because, see, when it was Elijah, when it was his... When it was Elijah, Elijah says, I hear the sound of an abundance of rain. Let us get off this mountain. God says, no, don't try, don't try to do reenactments. Don't try to lock me into a certain way. I'll do it the way I want to do it. What God did was he melted the, the, the waters from the, uh, the mountains of Edom and he allowed the waters uh, to, to melt. The Bible says, and you shall, he says, I'm going to do this, verse 18, I want to read verse 18 to you. He says, and 
and this is but a light thing in the sight of the Lord. He will deliver the Moabites also into your hand. Listen, you it's not hard for me to provide water. It's a light thing. And not only will I provide water, but I will bless you. You're going to win. And you shall smite every fenced city and every choice city and shall fail every good tree. That is, you're going to chop them down and, 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 and stop all wells of water and mar every good piece of land with stones. And he talks about how he's going to deliver them. And what the Lord did was he causes the water uh, to come down by the way of Edom. And the country was fear what God moved. And it's amazing after, after they gave an offering. The Bible says in verse 20, and it came to pass in the morning when the meat offering was offered that behold there came water by the way of Edom. And the country was filled with water. God began to let water flow from the mountains. And the waters melted on the, 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 uh, the, the ice caps. And water flowed from the mountains and went down and filled the ditches. And the people had water. <coughs> and, they, and they won that battle. The Lord gave them victory over the Moabites. This gave Elisha favor. With Jehoram. After this, Elisha was used of the Lord. Even in a time of national apostasy, God still performed miracles and the Lord used his servant. Chapter 4, verse 1 through 7, you see where God uh, performed the miracle with the widow's oil. Chapter 4, verse 8 through 37, you see how the Lord raised the Shumanite woman's son. From the dead. She has showed kindness to the man of God. And God blessed her with a son. The son died. But the preacher raised uh, uh, her daughter. Her son from the dead. Chapter 4 verse 38 through 41. We see how the Lord used the man of God to purify stew. That was poison in the stew. And the preacher said put some meal in there. And y'all eat. You'll be all right. And the Lord gave them a miracle. In chapter 4, verse 42 through 44, he miraculously, with a very little food, fed 100 soldiers. God is a wonder. Chapter 5, Naaman was cured of his leprosy. And in chapter 6, we see the axe head floating. Chapter 6, we'll just look at this one for a minute. I'm almost home. Uh, my mama's here. I want to hug her some more. You know, one of, my, one of my favorite things when I go visit my mother is I just love to touch her hair. Say it again, Peter. Amen. Uh, Bishop, don't, uh, don't go see mama. Patrick, don't go. Pat goes home to see mama. And I like to just touch my mama's hair, touch my mom. And I, you saw me, I just, I just love holding her, just touch her, just feel. Uh, don't nobody feel like my mama. Praise the Lord. And I'm so glad that I can touch my mother. So if y'all say amen, I, 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 I'll preach. Uh, in chapter 6, it says, And the sons of the prophets said unto Elisha, Behold now, the place where we dwell is now too straight. The, the, the sons of the prophets said to Elisha, Our school, this is one of the campuses, our school is too small. And uh, it, it, we need another school. Let us, we pray thee, uh, let us go, we pray thee, uh, in, unto Jordan. Let us go down in the lower Jordan Valley, where it's lush, watery, and filled with vegetation. Let's go down there. Um, and uh, not in the desert parched areas, but let's go down there uh, and take thee hence. Every man a beam. Let every prophet. See, they had to work. They didn't have their legs crossed. Let every one of them cut down a tree. And let us make us a place there where we may dwell. And he answered and said, go ye. So let us, 
would you give us permission to go build a new wing? And, and one said, one of the prophets, one of the sons of the prophets says, be content, I pray thee, to go with thy servants. And he said, I will go. So one of the prophets said to Elisha, would you please, sir, come with us and, and work with us? And then Elisha said, yes, I'll go. So he went with them. And when they came to the Jordan, they cut down the wood. Everybody was working. But as one, but as one was failing, was cutting a tree, cutting a beam, the axe head fell into the water. And he cried and said, oh, my master, for it was borrowed. Let me help you out. 200, it was been about 200 years. You can read about it in 1 Samuel chapter 13. Uh, since Israel had began to depend on the Palestines for iron equipment. This tool for that day was a very expensive tool. And not only was it, a, is it an expensive tool, but it was a borrowed tool. What's the scene? One of the prophets was so eager to do the work. I, I knew I wouldn't get an amen there. So e eager to, to do the manual labor that he went and begged from one of his wealthier relatives who had an expensive tool made of iron. Said, please let me use this tool. Please, I'll take good care of it. I'll bring it back. Uh, man said to him, now look, this costs more than your house. Now I'll let you use it, but you better bring it back the way I've given it to you. I will, I, I'll, I'll take care of it, I'll do it, I'll do it. And he went down there and he went to work and while working, the thing fell into the water. And that's why he says to his master, said, Master, it was borrowed. That is, one writer says, the stronger language in the Hebrew says, but it was begged for. I begged my wealthy relative to let me use this too. And I promised them that nothing would happen. And lo, I lost it. It's in the water. What am I going to do? Look at God's man. The Bible says, and the man of God said, where fell it? Where? What part of the river? And he showed him the place. And he, Elisha, cut down a stick and cast it in there. And in, and the iron, look at this miracle, did swim. The prophet didn't lose his cool. He just said, show me why you lost it. <laughs> Cut down a stick, threw the stick out there in the general area, and the Bible said, and the iron did swim. Well, what is, what is, and therefore he said, take it up to thee, and, and he put uh, out his hand and took it. What is the point of this? It shows that we serve a God who is even concerned about little things. Have you ever lost your keys and prayed and asked God, Lord, would you please show me? Woo! Let me raise both my hands. Can't find my phone. Lord, I need you, Jesus. Wallet. For, have you ever lost anything? And with all that God's got going on, keeping the sun shining, the moon beaming, the stars twinkling, the earth spinning, God, with all this stuff going on, he's concerned about your keys. And he'll say, go look over here, go over there. I mean, you got all this going on, and yet he's concerned about your keys. What a mighty God we serve. With everything that was going on, God was concerned about this one excited young prophet who was excited about building the house of God. And when that prophet lost his tool, God said, I see it. And I'm going to help you. See, we serve a God who not, not one sparrow falls from the sky that he's not aware of it. The Bible teaches that the hair on our head is numbered. He's aware of things. He cares 
about us. And it also shows that in a time of national apostasy, God still performs miracles through his servants who trust in him. If you live holy, I don't care what's going on in the rest of the world, if you live right, the Lord will still make a way for you. Oh, the Lord ain't moving like he used to. Yes, he is. The Lord's not saving like he used to. Yes, he is. All you got to do is live holy like you used to. My God, if you do like you used to, God would do what he used to do. The Bible said the Lord's hands are not shortened, that he can't save. Neither is his ear heavy, that he cannot hear. He says, but your iniquities. Isaiah 59 and 1, your iniquities have separated between you and your God and your sins have caused him to hide his face from you. Stop what you're doing. Give up what God says give up and the Lord will return and the Lord will give you miracles. You'll see the power of the Lord again. Are you praying with me? Then the scene drastically changes. It goes from God using the man of God, praise the Lord, to look out for some little unknown upstart preacher. How God gave him back his tool. The prophet now moves from dealing with these minute issues, praise the Lord, to moving into politics, foreign policy. Text tells us in verse 8, then the king of Syria warred against Israel. This was king more than likely Ben Hadad, king of Syria. Syria, northeast of the northern kingdom. Syrians known also as the Armenians, Aram, Aram, Syria. The Syrians began to uh, make war, praise the Lord, against Israel. And this was really guerrilla warfare. For, for there was no declared war at this time, but the Syrians had begun to move on uh, uh, Jehoram and on the northern kingdom. But look at God. This is what I love about the Lord. The Lord deals with mundane issues. The Lord deals with losing tools. The Lord deals with a widow's oil. The Lord is concerned about making sure the food is sanitary. God's concerned, praise the Lord, about healing people of diseases like he healed Naaman. But he's also concerned about global issues, national issues. Then the king of Syria warred against Israel and took counsel with his servants, saying, in such and such a place shall be my camp. He's in such and such a place, we're going to set up our operations to do guerrilla attacks on the northern kingdom. And the man of God, Elisha, sent unto the king of Israel, Jehoram, saying, beware. God Almighty, that thou pass not such a place. For there, thither, the Syrians are come down. Literally, he says, don't overlook this particular place. Make sure you do not leave this place unprotected or unguarded or unfortified because the Syrians are going to try to take that place. The Lord is saying to all of us, don't leave certain areas of your life unguarded. Don't leave certain areas of your life unfortified because Satan is looking for a way to come in. He's looking for a, a way to slide in, to mess your life up. So then we can't afford to say, I got this locked and I got that locked and I don't have to worry about this. No, we got to pray about all of it because when there's an area left unfortified, when there's an area left without a soldier, that's where the devil would try to come in at. So the king would take the advice from the man of God and send soldiers yes, sir. to fortify these areas which would foil the plan yes, of Ben-Hadad. Oh, saints, every time you pray and you seek the Lord like the Bible says, you foil the devil's plan. 
Can I get a help? Get a witness in here? Praise the Lord. You who are streaming, don't leave areas unguarded and unfortified. And so, and the Syrians, and, and the Bible teaches um, in verse 10, and the king of Israel sent to the place which the man of God told him and warned him of and saved himself there, not once nor twice, on several occasions. Every time the preacher said, send soldiers, fortify this place, fortify that place. When the king obeyed, that place was fortified. When you hear that your church is doing something, you move with your church. That's how you fortify. That's how you get it together. That's how you stay strong in the Lord. You don't, you don't sit there from the pew. Well, I wonder if we should do that. Amen. What? You follow. Follow, follow the, the leading. The lead. As long as it's Bible, you follow the leading of the Lord. That's because right. God knows what we should be doing. That's right. That's right. I, want, I want to say to some of the happy warriors uh, who may have gotten tired or your, uh, maybe some of you, your job changed. Warriors, come back to the front line. Now, we're doing good, but there are some who, who you, you, you kind of fell off. Come back to the front line because the work of the Lord still needs to be done. Babies are still being slaughtered. Oh, they had just uh, multiple couples. Uh, I guess it was couples day yesterday. Couples coming down to kill the babies. And so we need warriors. I can't get an amen in place. So the man of God uh, had a pattern. And therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was so troubled. One writer said that, that Ben, her dad's heart, was storm-tossed. Another writer said he was in a whirlwind. Ben, her dad, went to cussing. He went to screaming. I mean, he had Elisha derangement syndrome. Who is telling in her dad, how is it that he knows every move that we're making? Which one of you is a spy? Right. How in the world is it that he's able to know what we're doing? Right. He, looked, he looked at them, he's going to kill every one of them. And uh, he said, because so, some of you are telling this man, you're telling this man, and, amen. And he called his servants and said, uh, will you not show me which of us it is who is a spy for the king of Israel? Verse 12, and one of his servants, one of them. I know the rest of them thank God for him because he was getting ready to wipe them all out. One of them said, none, my Lord. Notice the language, O king, none, my Lord, O king. But I'll tell you who's doing it, but Elisha. Oh, my. Good God Almighty. Oh the prophet that is in Israel. Now, what's interesting is they didn't have to explain to him who Elisha was. The reason I went over these six miracles is to show you that by now he had gained a reputation for himself. So when they, when they mentioned him, they knew who he was. Good God Almighty, before he uh, delivered the king from the Moabites, notice they said the, the way they qualified him was that he poured water on Elijah's feet. But now they're saying he's the prophet in Israel and they need not to mention Elijah for the Lord had by now established Elisha and said uh, he's, a, he's that prophet in Israel. He's the one that telleth the king of Israel the words that thou speakest, speakest in thy bedchamber. He's the one that's telling him. He's the one who has this supernatural ability to hear what you discuss and to tell the king what you, you've said. And uh, he said, go and spy where he is that I may fetch him. Send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dothan. I'm getting ready to park. He's in Dothan. Uh, everybody say Dothan. Dothan. So now he's, he's in Dothan. And uh, somebody say Dothan. Dothan. He's in Dothan. And, uh, and so uh, therefore he sent there horses and chariots and a great host. Uh, that they may by night compass the city. Now 
You're reading something that should not be able, shouldn't have been able to be. For I pointed out to you, you know what I'm preaching, you can't sleep on any of it. Because even in the opening, I'm dropping a foundation that's going to help you later on if you're listening. I told you that this is taking place in the northern kingdom. I mentioned that the, the capital of the northern kingdom is Samaria. Praise the Lord. I told you that uh, uh, it was the Syrians, Ben Hadad, north uh, east of uh, the northern kingdom. They're about a 50 to 100 miles so of the northern kingdom. And now we mention another town called Dothan. Dothan was 11 miles from Samaria. 11 miles from Samaria. Samaria was the capital of the northern kingdom. Dothan was 11 miles from Samaria. Samaria was uh, the capital of the northern kingdom. And Dothan was 11 miles from Samaria. Oh, Lord. You see, it, you, you, you see Dothan was a highly uh, fortified city because it was 11 miles from Samaria. Mm -hmm. And see, when you're that close to the capital, you're supposed to be protected real good. It shouldn't have been possible for an enemy band of raiders to infiltrate into the northern kingdom and get in there that deep and, uh, and nobody noticed them. You don't read where there was any resistance. They just got in and went from the northeastern. They went from Damascus up in Syria and they crossed over the Jordan River and they went over across the mountains and they got into Dotham just 11 miles from Samaria. Oh Lord, that should have been somebody that was said you can't do that. That should have been some Somebody that was that would have noticed the guerrilla attacks. Dotham, praise the Lord, was too deep into the northern kingdom. Some of you are too close to the pastor. You're too close. Brother Rick, I'm a little flat here. You're too close to the bishop. You're too close to the leadership. You're too close to the church for certain things to happen because you represent Dotham. And if the pastor is Samaria, then you're too close to the leader for the enemy to be able to come in and work certain things. My first assistant, my second assistant, the district missionary, the first lady, the board of directors, the praise team that I sing with all the time, and the choir that sings for me. Oh, Lord, good God Almighty, the musicians, and all of the saints, the mothers, the church mothers, and many of you, you represent my Dotham. Certain things ought not to be able to happen. The devil shouldn't be able to just walk up in here and mess up on the choir and mess up in the pulpit and mess up over there. That he ought not to be able to just slide in undetected and turn the mothers against the church, turn the assistants against the preacher. He ought not to be able to do it. Let me give you another example. Jesus is our Samaria and we're Jesus is Dotham. We ought to be walking so close to Jesus that the devil ought not to be able to use us to put a negative light on Jesus Christ. We should be so close to him that when the devil comes, we're able to tell the devil, I'm in Jesus's, I'm in Jesus's administration. I represent the Lord and you can't come here. You can't walk all up in here. You can't get past the security. You can't get past the ushers. You can't get past the brethren. You can't get past the choir. You can't get past this group and that group and just walk up in here. Walk up, walk past the first lady, walk up, 
walk past all these folk, nobody oppose you, and you surround the man of God. The devil is a liar. It's time for us to protect our walls, protect our borders, because Ben Haddad is sending gorillas in to try to weaken us. The devil is always trying to get in. But I wonder today how many will tell themselves, I'm a dothan. The devil ain't gonna come in. The devil ain't gonna surround me because I've got power, because I'm saved, because the Lord have raised me up. I don't know about you, but I don't want to put my Lord to an open shame. He saved me. He sanctified me. He filled me with the Holy Ghost. He made me. He made me a man. He let me live to get grown. He let me live to be a citizen. He gave me a name. He gave me a reputation. He made me a pastor, a superintendent, and a bishop. He's been good to me. He's raised me up. How can I let the Lord do all of that for me? And then I let ben Dad come in on a pose. The devil is a liar. I'm here to say up a room, but the devil ain't gonna walk up in here on a pose because we got prayer warriors. We got folk who fast. We got soldiers who are watching. We got people who are praying, saying, Lord, watch over the house. Keep us, Jesus. Somebody lift your hands and praise him in this place. Somebody say yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They went in. You don't read where they were opposed. You don't read where anybody stopped them. They went in by night. Nighttime is not an excuse because the soldiers in the northern kingdom should have been keeping their guard at night. And they went in at night. Thank you, Jesus. And they surrounded the house where the man of God was. Somebody say early. Early. The next morning, I heard the servant of the man of God. He got up, his minister, he got up early in the morning and he went outside. And when he went out, he noticed that a host, hallelujah, had surrounded the city of Dotham, had surrounded it with horses and chariots. And his servant ran back in the house, woke up Elisha and said, Oh, alas, my master, what shall we do? We're surrounded by the enemy. I love Elisha's response. He stayed cool. He stayed calm. And he stayed collected. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, don't panic. Hold yourself together. I know the enemy is coming against you, but you got to keep your cool. Yeah! Yeah, Lord! Oh, Jesus! I heard you. The man of God said, fear not. Hallelujah! Don't come unglued. Don't get crazy. He said, fear not, for they... They, they, can I read it? The way it's written, it says they, that with us are more. They, that with us more than they, that with them. If you notice, the word be is italicized. The word are is italicized. It was added by the translators to give clarity. So it reads, they that be with us are more than they that be with them. The Hebrew says they, they, for they that with us more than they with them. I'm glad, oh I'm glad, I'm glad that I am in the majority.
majority. Oh, I'm glad that I am. And praise the Lord. My status in America is that I am a part of a minority group. I'm an African American male, but in the kingdom, good God Almighty, I'm a man of God, and I'm a part of the majority. For they that be with us are more than they that be with them. Why don't you look around? Good God Almighty, if you look around, you ought to be able to see that you're not alone. The Lord is with you. The Lord is with you. Somebody praise him. Somebody praise him. Ah, ah, ah. The Lord is on our side. Now, there is, there is a difference between the way unaided eyes see things. The servant's eyes were unaided. And because his eyes were unaided, all he could see was the enemy. But thank God for a praying leader who prayed and notice when he prayed. Have you noticed that was what he didn't pray for? He didn't pray, fix it, Jesus. He didn't pray, help, Lord. He didn't pray, make a way. He didn't pray, come in, Lord. He didn't pray, send an angel. He just prayed and said, open his eyes that he might see. See, some of us are asking God to do what he's already done. It's already done. Before they got there, they that be with us were more than they that be with them. Before the devil attacked, the Lord had already made a way for you. All you got to do is just pray and just watch God work it out. He prayed and said, Lord, give him 2020 spiritual vision. Lord, open his eyes that he might see. You ought to call on him and say, Lord, open my eyes. Woo! If you're afraid today, just ask the Lord to open your eyes. Ah, yeah. Open my eyes. And the man, when he prayed, the Bible said that then God aided his eyes. God gave him Holy Ghost vision. To some of you, when you get that divine vision, you won't be so worried. When you get that divine vision, you won't be so depressed. When, 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 when you get that divine vision, oh Lord, you'll know that it's all right, whether you can see it or not. When, when, when the Lord aids your eyes. When the Lord aids your eyes. When God gives you eye drops. When God gives you Holy Ghost contact lenses. When the Lord gives you, when he opens your eyes, you'll realize that the way is already made. That he's already fixed it for you. And all you got to do is trust him. When the Lord opened his eyes. He saw chariots of fire. He saw the army of God. All, notice why he saw them now. He saw them on the mountains. Surrounding, not the army of the enemy, but surrounding Elisha. They were already there. They were not alone. Hallelujah. 
Because he promised. I'm closing the book. He promised. Never to leave. Never. Can I close by saying, I've seen the lightning flashing. Oh, when I had the thunder roll, I felt sins, breakers crashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I had the voice of Jesus telling me, fight on, for he promised never to leave me. Somebody say yeah, say yeah, oh Lord, woo, you ought to praise him because you are not alone. He promised, he promised, he promised never to leave me. Never to leave me alone. In these times, when if you don't agree with people, they'll try to bark out your business. In these times, when you don't agree with folk, They'll try to shame you. Somebody told me of a preacher who said that if black folk think a certain way, he said that he is going to cost them their black card. My response is, you can have my black card. I got something better than a black card. Mm-hmm. I got black skin. Ain't nothing you can do to change that. Even if I don't think the way you think. That don't mean that I'm not authentic. You don't hear me. The devil is trying to bully people. And frighten you. Beat you into silence. Wear you down. Make you not state your positions. Have you afraid to say something. Telling you if you you speak up you ain't going to make it. Well, he promised. God promised. Never to leave me. He promised never to leave me alone. You're not by yourself. We've been praying, Lord, send this. Lord, do that. He don't need to send anything. It's already sent. The way is already made. You just don't see it. Like that thing you hit the other day. Yeah, you ran into it. You hit it. Now you got a flat tire. And you say, I didn't even see it. But that don't mean that it wasn't in the road. You just didn't see it. Glory to God. Oh, it was there. And I'm here to tell you that your blessings are there. The way is made. The doors are open. Let's be fair to the servant. You know, Gehazi had messed up. So this was a new one. He's inexperienced. Give him time. The sage, the the much more experienced prophet says, stay calm. Lord, open his eyes. He opened his eyes and he saw. And God gave them victory. Today is Victory Sunday. Victory is yours. If there's something that you've been facing that you believe God for today, hallelujah. As a matter of fact, you believe that it's done. See, in the world, The world's motto 
Can I tell you the, the world's motto? The world's motto is seeing is believing. That's the world's motto. Faith motto is believing is seeing. See, the world says, I won't believe it until I see it. Faith says, believe it and you'll see it. David said, I would have fainted except I believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Can you believe? If you can believe, then you can see. Come to the altar. I want to pray. I've seen the lightning flashing and I've heard the thunder roar. I felt sins break us dashing, trying to conquer my soul. Well, I heard the voice of Jesus telling me to fight on. He promised. Leave me alone. Let me do it again. I've seen the lightning flash, I heard the thunder roar. Well, I felt sins break us dashing, trying to conquer my soul. But I heard the voice of Jesus telling me, Patrick, fight on. He promised. Never to leave me, never to leave me alone. Everybody sing, no, never alone. Let me hear you sing, no, never alone. Oh, no. See, he promised never to leave me. Well, now, never to leave me alone. No, never alone. Thank you, Jesus. No. He promised never to leave me, never to leave me alone. No, never alone. Hey, hey, no, never alone. Well, 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 well. He promised never to leave me, never, never to leave me alone. He promised, he promised never to leave me.
Glory to God. Glory to God. Lift your hands to him. Glory to God. Oh, my Shikanda of the Bosa. God of Elisha. God of Elijah. We've learned enough today to know that it is not ours to tell you how to do it. It's not ours to tell you when to do it. Huh. But God, we can ask you to open our eyes. For if we look today, if we look at it right, we will see that you've already done it. It's already done. Forgive me, the name of the church escapes me. But there is this church, we're going to finish praying. It's not in America. People visit. And a visitor, upon visiting this church, saw an old gray building that looked very neglected. He wondered why this was such a attraction. Why people come from so far to see this place. Oh, hey, Chicago. He was disappointed. Meantime, I made this trip to see this. God bless you, Brother Abbott. Felt like he'd lost, throw, thrown away his money. It was had until he walked in. When he walked in, the difference between the outside and the inside was day and night. How the stained glass windows, how the colors, how the brilliance, the upkeep, the glory of the place was like nothing they'd ever seen. And he saw the glory of God there. What is my point? To the world. On the outside looking in, they view Christianity one way. But for those of us who are on the inside, see, we're on the inside. When you're on the inside, you never act like folk act on the outside because they don't know. But when you're on the inside, you know how good the Lord is. You know that Jesus is real. You know that he'll never let you down. You know that he's a comforter, that he gives us strength. On the count of three, I want you to begin to praise him. I want you to begin to worship him. I want you to begin to give him glory like your own, the inside. Hashe. Elisha was on the inside. He was looking from the inside out. His servant was looking from the outside in. His, what his servant saw caused him to panic. What the preacher saw caused him to stay calm. I'm on the inside. See, some of us have walked with the Lord long enough to know, ain't no point in falling apart. God's got it. God's got it. What's going to happen? What's going on? God's got it. God's got it. He's holding the reins. God's got it. Oh, yeah, he knows. He knows. He knows. I've been a while. Around a while. I've seen a few things. God knows. One. You're getting ready to praise him and worship him and give him glory like he's on the inside. And in giving him glory, you don't have to out try to glory someone else, you know. Just lift him up. Two, he's a mighty God. Mm. He's on the inside. <laughs> now you understand why, because I asked myself now, why is it that you showed him what the king, Benadad, was trying to do to Jehoram, but you didn't show him 
the gorillas right. coming to get you. Yes, sir. I got my answer. God said, I already provided for that. I've, I, I've, I've already fortified my servant. I don't need to show him. See, a lot of things God don't show you because he's already fortified. I mean, what you want, he's already fortified. It's already done. Three, giving praises from the inside. You who are streaming, worship him like you're on the inside. Not like people on the outside, but like people on the inside. Go. Give him that inside praise. I'm on the inside. Give him that inside worship. Give him that inside glory. Inside. I'm on the inside. I'm on the inside. Yokes are being destroyed right now. Yokes are being destroyed right now. The devil is being destroyed right now. It's going to be manifested that it's already done. It's already done. Praise him like you believe it. Praise him like you believe it. Praise him like you believe it. See it until you see it. Believe it until you see it. See it, see it, see it, see it, see it, see it, see it. Lord, I see, I see, I see. Hallelujah. Glory to God, glory to God, glory to God. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Yes to your word. Thank you because the battle is over. Thank you because Benadad is already defeated. Thank you because we've already won. Thank you, oh God, that I was never alone. Even when I felt alone, even when it looked like I was alone, I've never been alone. For you promised never to leave me. You promised that you would never leave nor forsake me. You said, and lo, I am with you even to the end of the age. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Thank you for delivering me. Thank you, oh God. Thank you for working it out. Thank you because it's worked out. Thank you because you worked it out. Thank you because it's done. Thank you because it's done. Thank you because you're real. Thank you because I'm surrounded. The devil can't get to me. Whatever God allows, He's already allowed, he's already made a way of escape. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, oh, I came to church worried, but I'll leave church happy. I came in burden, but I'll leave with joy. I came in afraid, but I'll leave with courage. I came in worried, but I'll leave without a care because I cast them all on him because he cares for me. somebody in here who can shout I don't have a care in the world because I've given them all to Jesus I don't have a care in the world I don't have a care in the world because I've given them to Jesus. I've given them to the Lord. Go down and anoint that sister right there. Ooh. Touch her right now, Lord. Ooh, Lord. 
Touch right now. Touch right now, Lord. Touch right now. You know God. Do it in Jesus' name. Somebody praise God for it right now. Don't have a care in the world because I've given it to Jesus. I've given it to Jesus. He's opened my eyes. I see I'm not alone. I see that the Lord is with me. Mm. In somebody's life, God's making the devil out of a liar. Hallelujah. Lay your hands on them. In the name of Jesus. Anoint them boys right there. In the name of Jesus. My time is up. My time. My time is up. I, I, I tried to preach fast. But now my time is Heal him, Lord, in the name of Jesus. Heal him, Lord. May he not grow up with problems with his hearing. In Jesus' name, bless these boys. Cause your face to ever shine upon them. May they grow up to be preachers, men of God, contributors to society. Hallelujah. Y'all do know our boys have more options than sports, right? Correct. You do know that. You can be something other than an athlete and still be somebody. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, my. Hallelujah. Oh, my. The Lord heal you. The Lord heal you. Yes. The Lord heal you. Heal Lord, I don't even know what type it is, but you know. Yes. God, you heal diabetes like you heal all other conditions. Yes. Woman of God, the Lord make you whole. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. Somebody praise God for. Yes. Somebody praise God. Yes. Praise God, everybody. Praise Him in the building. Father, we give you all the praise. Father, we give you glory. Father, we lift up your name in the name of Jesus. For you are God and you are good. In Jesus' name, thank God. Amen. Would you praise him? Would you give him glory? See, one of the things, one of the things I want you to know how to do is, because I'm always, I'm all, I'm never, you have a pastor, I, I'm never just saying something. I'm always instructing. Before I make an altar call, I give you the frame of mind that you ought to come in. Now, if you come saying, Lord, I need you to do what I just preached, it's already done. We in different places because what God is challenging you to do is to act like, to believe that just that, that, that it's done whether you see the evidence of it or not. See, see, that, that, see that's, what, that's what accounts sometimes for the disconnect because I'm praying toward that end that you believe. John said, John said the reason the book of John was written, he said these things were written that you might believe. <laughs> Glory to God. And that you might believe. The whole point is, the whole point in preaching is to get you to believe. Yes, sir. What what, did I, what do I want you to believe today? I want you to believe that God's already done. 
Whether you see it or not. Whether you see it or not. Whether you see it or not. I want you to believe that the problem is not God's inactivity. The problem is not God's lack of provision. The problem is your sight. I just don't see it. So what does that mean? Nothing. It just means you don't see it. It certainly doesn't mean it's not done. The preacher said, open his eyes. I ask you, Father. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. As I stand on this altar. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Show yourself strong. Show them once more that I am your servant and that I have said these things at your direction. I ask you, O oh God, to open their eyes. And as their eyes come open, they will see that they are already surrounded. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him to deliver them. In Jesus' name. Now give God praises. Give him glory. Praise him all over the altar. Praise him all over the church. You can praise him as you go to your seats. College students, meet me one more time on the altar. Today is many of them their last day as they get ready to go back to school. You better not go to school and lose your fire. I thank God. Where is uh, Carrie? Come here, darling. Where, where's your older sister? Come here. That's what I want to say. Kyle, come here, darling. Praise the Lord. All of them come. All of all y'all come for prayer. But she's coming, darling. She has graduated, and and uh, 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 you you out of college, and you finish your internship. Yes, sir. And love the Lord. <laughs> Save, like the Bible says. She's a, a, a this is proof. Will God keep you? Yes, He will. To tell him something. Tell him something. Since you did it. Called you on the spot. What do you do for you? Um, well, basically what she just said, he kept me throughout the four years. If you want to be kept, he will keep you. That's right. um, yeah, what else? <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, he kept me. I just kept made sure that I talked to my parents every day. I kept up with Bishop. I got involved in my own campus ministry. Um, that was a big thing. There are other people on campus who are saved, who want to be saved, and they want to um, talk to you, right? Mm -hmm. So just get involved. Um, did, you, did you try to go Muslim? No. Oh. <laughs> no. Did you, did you get involved with the five percenters? No. Did you get involved? How about them fraternities and sororities? No, I'm not getting involved the, in that. Uh, what, are, what about drinking? Nope. I don't, like, what's the joy, what's the point? There's no joy in that. Hallelujah. How'd you live? Holy. <laughs> Put it on TV. Bring it in close. People need to see that God's a keeper. Yes. Everything, there's a method to the madness. Everything I do, there's something behind it. I'm never wasting time. You have to pay attention. In this church, you have to pay attention from the time the bell rings to the time the bell rings. Because God is saying something. If, if she can make it, how old are you now? 21, almost 22. Almost 22. How old are you when you went to school? 18. 18 years old. And you know, do you, you might not notice, but your parents, they were a little concerned because they thought, you know, because you was a little, your personality was a little more like your daddy's. That she, she's, a, she's a little laid back. She's, I mean, you know, if I had a mama said, where's Robert? Am I right, Robert? She don't talk. She don't talk. <laughs> That's why she, now if her sister was up here, she'd be still talking. 
She would give y'all all the instruction. But see, she hadn't, been, she hadn't got to graduate from college yet. So I figure I'm going to use the one who, who did it and who's here today and, 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 and stayed in touch. And she comes back home looking like she's saved. Amen. And walking in holiness. Representing Jesus Christ. If God can keep her, God can keep you. Hear what she said? She said when she went, she stayed in touch. Yeah. Kept up with the church. Now, ain't no, ain't no reason why he came. You know how to stream. You stream everybody else. You know how to keep me. You know how to stay. stay in touch. She said she talked to her parents. Parents, make time for your children. Yeah. But the biggest reason she gave, the biggest one, I hope y'all caught it. She said, I wanted to be kept. Yeah. God will keep you if you want to be kept. Yeah. Now, if you don't want to be kept, if you're sitting there and you stand, say, saying to yourself, I can't wait, I can't wait. Woo, I'm just, I'm going to show them once I get out, get out, get away from home. That, that's exactly what you'll do. And you'll pay for it. That'll be on you. See. Um, amen. But if you, if you do right, God's going to bless you. Thank you so much. I, I speak a blessing to every one of you. As you move forward, you need to know that we're so proud of you. You're the best of us, and we rejoice in you. Serve the Lord with gladness. Don't you let nobody be gladder to be in what they're in in that college campus than you are to be in Jesus. I was glad to be in Jesus. I wasn't no secret servant. I was glad to be in Jesus. Everybody who knew me knew I was in Jesus. Had a reputation. Amen. For being in Jesus. God bless these young folks. Let them speak up often and loud for you. I pray a militant spirit on every one of them. Lord, may this anointing not be limited to height or to stature. But God, let the anointing be heavy on these young people. Let them make a pact amongst themselves that they will not be the one to drop the ball. May they go and learn. Get the lessons. May they be mature enough. Those who are able to drive, may they drive with sense. Don't fill your car up with your con comrades. Don't be driving and texting. Some kids got killed the other day. Say too many. Do you all not know in the state of North Carolina, North Carolina leads the country. We got the highest rate. When the, either we're number one or in the top three in the country in teenagers getting killed in cars. One of the reasons is uh, in, in our state, you can get your license and your permit earlier than the other state. I'm one one they might not, they may need to move that thing back to 21. What do y'all think? <laughs> I was doing good till I did that one. Amen. But you, but you have to be mature with that. You have to be mature with that. You can't let everybody ride with you. Praise the Lord. And when you drive, drive with both hands. Say, but I know if my mom and daddy drive with one, you're not your mom and your daddy. You drive with both of them. Amen. And then parents, get your kids. Let the first car be a hundred dollar car. Why? Why are you buying them? Why would you buy? Let their first car be a hot rod. Why would you let that first car be a car with 500 horses under the engine? Let them learn on something. It can't go, it won't hardly go past 50. <laughs> I did that with both my children. Oh, I could afford, I could afford more, but I wasn't trying to impress nobody. Can't, can't you buy her a bigger car? I can buy her any kind of car I want to, but I wanted her to learn on something because she couldn't learn in mine. So I want her to learn in something that she could make mistakes in. One Sunday we would come from church and Crystal was driving my car. 
And the car stopped in front of us. And Chris was driving. And the car stopped in front of us. She just eased right up on that car. Boom! Did the car look at baby, you didn't see that car. But she was learning. A few days later, I went and bought her a car. <laughs> Parents, be careful. Be careful. You know the maturity of your child. I'm not trying to raise your child for you. I'm just throwing out some things. You ain't got to. I feel some of you contradicting me. And I know that one size don't fit all. But you know what? These boys, too much testosterone in them. You, you don't want to put them under a 5-0. Shelby Mustang, 700 horses. A teenage, seven, 17 or 18, seven. I started buy one. I went to, to the fourth place, and I had them to start that Shelby up. And when they started up, you know what I did? I told the devil, Lucy, I got to go. Because all I saw was me going to jail or getting killed. Because I didn't need to sit under 700 horses. I would have went straight to the moon. Or you could call it that. So, Father, bless these kids. Watch over them. Keep them, Lord. Protect them. Cause your face to ever shine upon them. And, Lord, let them come home. And when they come, God bless us to have little sessions where we can sit down and they can report victory. And we can hear it and put it out there and let people see that you are a keeper, and there's a reality in serving the Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. God bless you all. I love you. The hand of God be on you. Praise the Lord. Bless him too, Lord. Watch over him as he serves our nation. Wow. Active dude. Preacher, where's uh, where did Albert? Where did Albert go? Albert, come here, come here, come here, come here. Come here, sit down. Lay hands on this. He's going to active duty tomorrow. This young man right here. So proud of you, brother. My God. Lord, watch over him. Anoint him right now. In the name of Jesus. Watch over him, Lord. Oh, God. From one military man to another. Brother, lay hands on him. You military men, lay hands on him. Price, lay hands on him. These men who have served. In the name of Jesus. If you serve, just touch him. Touch him. Ask God to protect. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. That's right. Touch Baba. Touch him. My God today. Woo! Touch him, Lord. In the name of Jesus. For your glory and for your honor, watch over him. Keep him, Lord. In Jesus' name, we pray. Thank God. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. God, keep our law enforcement. Keep these people safe. Out there protecting all of us. Keep them safe, Lord, in Jesus' name, amen.